Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Lotus, where we talk about all things strange and unusual. And if this is your first time uh, joining us, uh, we would very much invite you to watch our other videos, and you'll find quickly find that this is not normally what we do at right. Black Lotus here. Uh, we don't normally do interviews and that kind of thing. Um, but I am on uh, since March. Uh, we've had to. <clears throat> had to take somewhat of a hiatus from Black Lotus. Uh, and the reason being is because I am in a service that's considered essential. And uh, so I, business is banging right now. So I don't, uh, don't really have the time to do my fair share of the research that we normally put into these things. And uh, I don't wanna lay all that work on Ralph. And we do, we research the hell out of the, our, our, our topics here. We, you know, we talk about UFOs and, ghosts and cryptids and that kind Whatever. of thing yeah um <clears throat> but what, what, what i do have time for is we have a, a podcast over at podbean and i think we're at uh, we're also on iheart radio and uh, stitcher and oh i don't know po pocket casts several other ones um anyway the podcast is called paranormal news network and what we do there it's a little different than what we do here normally uh, we bring the latest in paranormal news and then we also uh, interview some just fascinating people that are involved with the paranormal world in some sort of way or another um, and so but we didn't want our faithful followers to forget about us <laughs> and think that we've forgotten about them we haven't and so what we've been doing lately is we've been taking the interviews that we do there at paranormal news network and we've been uploading them here as just uh, audio only interview. Um, the ones we've done, these people are really fascinating people. You know, yeah, uh, very interesting stuff. Yeah, Lori McDonald, who is a uh, 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 hypnotherapist and specializes <clears throat> in working with people with like abductees. Uh, we've interviewed uh, 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 Erica. Lukes. Lukes. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I can't remember his name. Her name suddenly. Erica Lukes, who uh, was the uh, former president of the Utah Utah chapter of uh, MUFON, and she specialized in the Skinwalker Ranch, and we had her on there, uh, and it was a really good interview, and we've uploaded that here too. Um, but anyway, this last week we interviewed Ronald C. Meyer, and Ronald C. Meyer is not only an author, but he's also a filmmaker, and he has uh, uh, directed and produced a movie that's currently streaming on Amazon. And it he has this theory that Bigfoot uh, is not actually just a hairy beast, but in fact is a interdimensional alien. Um, and that was this was a theory that I had never heard of before. And then uh, I was introduced to this guy, and I was fascinated uh, by that theory. And I, I don't know, man, he's almost got me hooked into that theory, you know. But anyway, but yeah, so we that, that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna have you take a listen to uh, Ronald C. Meyer. Thanks, folks, and please continue to watch. We should be back to to normal. I'm thinking around the beginning mid july somewhere around there so anyway thanks a lot don't forget to like and subscribe our guest tonight has authored a book entitled the bigfoot singularity and has produced and directed a film that is currently streaming on amazon called the bigfoot alien connection revealed which ralph i have to say is one of the best bigfoot alien documentaries i've ever watched and, uh, and so anyway, it's with great pleasure that we introduce Ronald C. Meyer. Ron, welcome to the Paranormal News Network. How are you? Happy to be here. I'm doing well. Good, Colorado, good. The beautiful Colorado. Yeah, yeah. I surviving this whole coronavirus nonsense and uh, as well as all the rioting going on. Hope you're away from that. Well, you know, I've, I've been in the media for a long time. And they show you little sections and you kind of believe that the whole town's on fire, but usually it's not really much at all. Yeah, so yeah. It's it's one of the tricks of media to overplay yeah. what's going on. Yeah, and it's it is I think it's all about, you know, the fear factor, you know, and just if it bleeds, it leads kind of thing, you know. Yeah, and people pay it's getting eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Regarding this 
Bigfoot matter. Um, I was just mentioning to Ralph that up until maybe two, three weeks ago, I had never heard of the Bigfoot singularity theory. Um, but then I listened to a, <clears throat> excuse me, a Paranormal uh, Chronicles podcast that you did with our good friend G.L. Davies. And I became really intrigued with the theory. And evidently, the theory is gaining a lot of traction within the Bigfoot and the uh, UFO communities. Um, so with that in mind, Ron, can you tell us when you got started studying Bigfoot and how you came upon this theory? Sure. First, let me mention that, you know, a lot of people are kicking and screaming, crossing over from the hairy creature in the woods to uh, something paraphysical. It's it, it's a slow transition, but it is picking up speed, like you said. I would so, imagine. So five years ago, you know, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm hired to produce television series, and I've been doing it for a long time. I've done feature films, but I was hired to produce a series on the Bigfoot phenomena. Not so much, you know, on running out and investigating like. Uh, you know, you see on TV most of the time where a group of people go out and try and find Bigfoot but never do. Uh -huh. uh, it was a broader perspective of what's the whole thing about. Why Why is it all of a sudden so big? And, you know, it's used in advertising as well, as you know. If you can get a Bigfoot on your, on your, on your, your product, you're going to sell more product, I guess. Yeah. So anyhow, I was hired to do, to do a series on the Bigfoot phenomena. And I, and I really knew nothing about it. I, I, as a kid, I'd been very fascinated with aliens. I had a, an interesting experience when I was quite young. I ground myself a, a mirror, built a telescope, and uh, was looking at the stars all the time as, as a young person. I was fascinated by the whole possibility of UFOs and had one interesting experience. I was sitting on the platform I built on top of my garage and this light came down, you know, the typical thing. And I was quite excited. And so I've had that interest in, in aliens and UFOs, but my introduction to cryptids was, was really when I was hired to do Chasing Bigfoot, which is now streaming on Amazon as well. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. And I went, I, did you, have you ever gone to a Bigfoot conference? I have not, no. Um, I, I, I did live in Oregon for a little while in uh, Portland area. And, uh, the, you know, the reason I believe in Bigfoot is because I have a very good friend of mine who is an avid hunter, and he has been his whole life. And he claims to have seen a Bigfoot. Now, this is a guy who is not given to fantasy. You know, I mean, and fanciful yeah. tales. Um, and, you know, I mean, he knows the wildlife there and he can't describe what he saw as anything other than Bigfoot. And I believe him, you know, and that's one of the reasons that I believe in Bigfoot is because this guy is just, you know, I mean, reputable. he's reputable. He, he, he does. He doesn't believe in all kinds of weird stuff. He, he doesn't believe in necessarily ghosts and aliens and all that stuff. Uh, but he does claim that he saw a Bigfoot. So I, I tend to believe him. That's one of the reasons I believe. It's, that's a pretty typical experience, a contact experience. So as a result of uh, being hired to do this, I wanted to interview as many contactees as I could to see if there was a pattern, what their reactions, how they told their story. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was convinced that the majority of the people who reported seeing a Bigfoot were pretty much like your friend. They had, they, at some point in their life, some people saw them quite young, you know, as young people, and had not, you know, mentioned it to anybody for fear of being ridiculed. And when, and when they retold their story of the contact, you know, I could tell they weren't lying. They were remembering something. Some of them, you could see, and the variety of, of responses to it were from fear to, you know, a kind of euphoric joy, like mm. they had had seen something very spiritual, and 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 by and large they were very normal, typical people, people who were not out seeking unusual, paranormal, freaky experiences or believer in that stuff. In fact, it, it was the experience that 
that changed their perspective on the world. Every everyone said it changed their perspective and what they thought was possible. Mm -hmm. And and so so th that that was very interesting to me. So that I became I believe that that they really had real experiences. Now what they were, um, I you know being having a science background to some degree, I, I just couldn't believe that that there was something that was you know kind of a wild man hairy creature maybe ape-like creature running around hidden i just couldn't believe that 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 was possible it didn't make any sense to me mm -hmm. but i carried on and uh i talked to a lot of interesting people with points of view i went on a number of bigfoot hunts you know they're pretty popular you can probably google in your neighborhood um a Bigfoot hunter investigation, and you'll find people that will take you out kind of like a nature walk, usually at night, mm -hmm. uh, starting in early evening, and they'll show you things which you think are signs of that a Bigfoot was there, bent trees, you know, stick structures, a variety of, and maybe a footprint or two, um, and wood knocks. We did, I did a lot of wood knocks. In one case, we actually got a reply but eventually, as I learned more about paraphysical Bigfoot and started talking to people who had contact with Bigfoot over a longer period of time than just a single little experience, were quite convinced that they were capable of mimicking almost any sound. And there's uh, some very famous recordings of, of Bigfoot sounds, and uh, one in particular by Ron Moorhead. And so, I and then I, I, I was I, I, I think I remember hearing that, and it sent chills down my spine. It's called the Sierra Sounds, yes. Yeah, very, very remarkable. So if they can make all those sounds, mimic human voices, they don't have to grab a stick and whack a tree. They can just make a sound with their mouth, which a Native American I encountered in, in, in making the movie was able to do it perfectly. So I think that's entirely possible. But towards the end of the series, I ran across a guy, his name is Jim Myers, and he happens to be in Colorado. And he runs the uh, Sasquatch Outpost in a kind of a remote Colorado mountain town. And he said, well, I have a different view on this. I think they're, they're paraphysical or paranormal creatures and that and that they can do, do things like they're interdimensional. He, did, he didn't have a full explanation. But he said he had run into so many people that had seen odd things in association with Bigfoot, which were, you know, shape shifting, moving into orbs associated with with UFOs. Uh, and and by and large the the trackways, the footprints people find, are quite short. You know, nobody's ever tracked a Bigfoot, let's say, for a mile or a quarter of a mile, or even a tenth of a mile, or a block. It's just right. like four or five and that's it. So, I so what? That, what do you think the relationship between uh, paranormal, you know, the the paranormal orbs, Bigfoot, and shapeshifters would be? I think in some way they're the same phenomenon. Are they? Yes, and and and, and one possibility. And I, I, I've come to the conclusion after interviewing people, people like you, because you've had experiences, is that the contact experience is not accidental. It's not like you're walking in the woods and you were very lucky to see like a deer running across the road or if you're, you know, you know, really into nature and you see a wolf, you're pretty thrilled if you see one crossing the road. It was an accident. You were just lucky you were at the right, at the right. right time. They showed, they showed up specifically for you and i think that's true of every kind of paranormal phenomenon they're showing up for you in that particular instant but since they're alien in probably what most people will say that any alien form is is even our artificial intelligences which are becoming another kind of intelligence that you're not going to be able to understand you know, their framework of thinking, if they think at all. That, so, yes, go ahead. 
Um, what you're saying then is that Bigfoot actually turns into an orb? It's 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 capable of doing that. They're shape shifting. Okay. Just about to make uh, sure I was understanding that. For for example, have you did you ever watch for um is it Searching for Bigfoot, the Animal Planet series? Yeah, yeah. So one of, one of the guys, you saw him in the movie, Bobo, right? Uh-huh. The, there, you know, the, when, you run, when you're running a series like that, you, you have a book that tells you how the show is going to go and you don't deviate, it from, deviate from it. And one, one of the rules is no, no paraphysical mention of Bigfoot. It's always a, some form of bipedal, hairy, something or other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no alien aspect to it. Although, as you remember, maybe you remember from the, from the movie that Bobo did describe a case where he saw an orb and he heard the the footprints of a of a Bigfoot stomping through the woods, and the whole crew heard and saw it. So, and he had many other experiences, but they couldn't bring him to light on the show, mm. which which is interesting. Well, it's kind but, of sad, too, you know. Right, and, and the show was you can't find Bigfoot because then the series is over with. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you about uh, uh, a segment in the film that you put out, um, and and the, uh, it was it was about the the orbs. There were orbs all over the place in this thing. Um, and you filmed this, and I wanted to know what that experience was like for you. Well, interestingly, um, you're talking about the Montana Mystery House, right? Right, right, right. The Vortex is Joe Hauser's place. You know, he, he has, he claims that he has a, a relationship with a Bigfoot that's gone on for, for multiple years. Not constantly, but periodically. And they can tell it, like, stop throwing rocks at our house. Um, and his place is quite quite interesting in that there's multiple phenomena. You can remember for the movie, I'm pushing this idea that there are paranormal hotspots, which seem to be quite common. Places that are thin to the other side or dimensional transfer, interdimensional transfer is easy, and you'll have a number of these phenomena phenomenas together happening over a period of time in one geographical area. So he's got one of those places. I was very interested in those in those places. So yeah, he, he says he has orbs all the time, or most of the time, unless, you know, they don't show up. So we we had our own infrared video cameras and we picked up nothing, but he had he had still cameras, he and his wife and they were shooting and shooting and shooting and eventually, they registered orbs, and you know you could scroll through and see what they shot, and in a very short period of time, they showed a sequence of orbs emerging around our crew. But I, I saw nothing, felt nothing. I'm just being honest. Out of the mm -hmm. unusual. So the whole place felt very peaceful for me, but I've been to a lot of sacred places and I I sometimes shift into a, a kind of very calm, peaceful state. And that was going on pretty much the whole time at that place. Well, you know, and I imagine, especially in that uh, type of setting where, I mean, you're deep in the woods and it's very quiet, just the animal sounds. Yeah, I can imagine how you would certainly shift into that state of consciousness. Yeah, not everybody does. But, you know, the, the idea that, that these things have to show up in the woods, I think is a misnomer. A number mm -hmm. of people who, I, who we interviewed, who had contact experiences, had them in their backyard, um, one on a military base, you know, that they, they don't have to be classically in the woods, although it's neat to go out in the woods and it's a little spooky, right, for us these days as as human beings. And, you know, people have been, been in kind of urban settings and they've showed up looking in their window, you know. So 
if if they're interdimensional, they can pop up any place, anytime they want. Right. And, you know, with that in mind, it goes on to my next question for you. And that's um, what do you think that they want? I mean, generally they're seen in the woods, but like you said, occasionally somebody in an urban environment will see one. Um, with that in mind, what do they want? What are they doing here? The closest I can come to an explanation is that they change how you look at the world or your perspective on the world. No, I, I didn't run across anybody that that had like direct communication in the sense that they said, you know, you should change your job or stop cheating on your wife and, or, you know, and anything along those lines. Nobody reports that. They seem to, to be typical of the classic spiritual experience people have. You know, they see, you know, the, the mother of Jesus or, or the Kundalini experiences in, the, in, in Eastern traditions where they awaken something in you that it's a kind of awakening. I see, I see. And um, my, my idea is that these awakenings have been occurring all along. It makes sense because, can, can I ex try and explain this to you, the interdimensionality? Sure, sure, absolutely. So I, I think that, you know, what our senses give us, you know, sound, touch, um, smell, sight, that, that these, these are just like desktop icons on your computer. They're, mm -hmm. not, they're not really reality. Behind, you know, behind those desktop icons is, is a bunch of electronics, right? That you don't really see and look nothing like the icon. Right. And, and, and largely, almost all the advances, technological advances of humans, have come as a result of what you might say, people who have extraordinary insight into something that shows up mathematically. For example, quantum mechanics, you know, people have given up. It's totally non-intuitive to us, isn't it? You ever try to figure out, understand what the hell quantum mechanics is about? Oh, I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even attempted. I mean, the idea that, that time slows down when you speed up, that doesn't make any sense to you, does it? Right, no. Or um, that, you know, things, things can be in two places at once, you know, or tied, you know, together. That is not our experience, but there's mathematics behind that that allows us to be talking to each other on our cell phones or whatever we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, so I think, so I think these experiences that, that show up for a lot of people and have showed up for people have allowed them to, to see deeper into the into the reality behind our re our normal everyday reality, which is which is you know very superficial, but helps us survive as you know um, people who need really to to the need to exist and survive because of our biology and reproduce, and that's it by and large. And if you don't if you don't have to do that, if you don't have a body like that, well then. That's our main framework for describing our motives and purposes. So I, I, I would believe that other intelligences probably don't, and most likely most don't have that, that built into them. So the way they look at things is very different. Hmm. Anyhow, that's, that's, that's kind of the conclusion I'm coming to these days. That's interesting. Um, I want to get back to, I'm sorry? Pretty far out, but it seems to be closer to the truth to me. Well, what's far out anymore, really? You know, I mean, it's, so I I think that's one of the things I like about the paranormal world today, as opposed to you know years ago, is that people are more willing to accept uh, what would have been you know used to be considered outlandish ideas, um, and so and I think people are more willing to accept that. You they know? have more open mind. Right, and people have these experiences, and they've been reluctant to communicate them to anybody else yeah. because it, it makes them seem weird. Um, and, and, I'm sorry. And, and you said you've had some some contact experiences, mainly in 
not in the cryptid world, but in, you know, kind of the classic. Yeah. Am- uh, ghosts and UFOs, aliens, that sort of thing. Yeah. The, we, Ralph and I both have, uh, uh, like I was telling you, I, we're just kind of magnets for this stuff. I don't know why, but it is what it is, you know. So that, that opened things up for you, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, the abduction experience that I had um, kind of just blew my mind and it made me see the world in a completely different way. Uh, I, I was abducted in 1988, but I didn't remember any of it um, until 1995. In fact, I didn't even believe that aliens were visiting us. I mean, I knew that uh, or I felt that, you know, there was uh, alien life out there, obviously. I mean, in this vast universe, obviously. But yeah, yeah. I didn't think they really had any interest interest in us until I had I had this memory triggered by something I was reading, and I immediately was back in that 1988 scenario. I mean, and yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's a uh, it it has completely opened my eyes to the way the world is. And it instead of just that it possibly happened, because for the longest time, you know, I thought I was nuts that it was all hallucinating. But even though I wasn't taking any drugs, uh, but the more I've talked with other abductees and other experiencers, the more I realized that what happened to me actually did happen. And it, it is completely changed my life you know, and the way I look at the world. So that's what I said, right? Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. That, that, but, you know, um, beyond that, there's, I don't think you'd probably say that there's some grand purpose, you know, that, um, that you can point to that's, that you want to share to everybody and say, this is, this is what we all should do. I mean, it doesn't, they don't seem to have that aspect to them. Mm-hmm. Do you just see the world differently, operate in the world differently? Yeah, and, 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 and I don't know if it's because of that experience, but that's what I suspect it is, it's that it is because of that experience that I kind of opened my eyes. And, and, and the other characteristics that, that I found in doing the, the research and talking to people is that, that if you, depending upon how you respond to a contact experience, You'll probably have more if if the response is favorable in some sense, like you, like yours is. You you took that in a positive way. I did, and if you know, when I first had this memory, I I thought of these creatures as being I don't know benign or I don't know if benevolent is the word, but um, I th- I thought that they were relatively innocent. I mean, th- because what I could remember of it. Um, was more interesting than anything else. But there was a part, a part of the memory that was just completely blacked out. And I was on the a table and one of the aliens came up to me and put her hand on my forehead and, um, and I blacked out. And the next thing I know, I was up and walking around with her on the ship. Um, and But then about maybe six months ago, uh, Ralph and I were watching this movie called uh, The Fourth Kind. Uh, Fourth Kind was that what it was? And it was about. Uh, it was based on uh, these uh, abductions that were ha- happening in uh, uh, Alaska a, a while back. And in one of the scenes, a woman was just des- uh, describing what she saw there, and they had a reenactment of it. Um, and it was a drill coming toward her eye and immediately I flashed back again and suddenly I remembered that entire experience that I couldn't remember prior to that. And I mean, I, it really shook me up. Um, I had to turn off the movie. I, I had yet to watch the rest of the movie because I just, I just couldn't take it. Um, and from what I gathered from that experience, uh, uh, they do have some sort of agenda going and I don't know what it is, but uh, my pleasant memories that I had before were wiped away with this uh, uh, horrible thing that happened. Uh, so yeah, so so I'm a kind of on the fence as to what aliens want of us. Uh, I do believe that there's a hybrid pro- program going on. Um, I don't think the Bigfoot anomaly 
really has anything to do with that. I think it's an entirely different species with an entirely different agenda. And I think they're just more curious about human beings and they're curious about our, our world. Um, and that's why you don't hear of people being abducted by uh, 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 Sasquatch. No, and they don't have any technology, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. they have interesting capabilities, you know, super capabilities like merging into a tree and disappearing. Um, you know, footprints that come out of nowhere, go a little ways and just disappear. Yeah, um, you you actually had uh, uh, an incident with that, right? Where where you you watched these vanishing footsteps on your property. Yeah, it was interesting. It, it, it was in the winter, well, late spring, late winter. And these prints started in an anthill, which was exposed. Although there was no print in the, in the anthill. And in the snow, they, it just came out of nowhere. And, and my son-in-law, who was the co-producer of the movie, he tracked it and followed it to a tree up a rocky bluff, and that and that disappeared again. Wow. So they came from nowhere and went nowhere. That's very uh, odd, very strange. And, I, and I, from what I can see, when people have found footprints, they all have that characteristic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah, want to get they, back to what you were saying about the uh, shape, sh shapeshifters. Um, yeah. Native Americans, you know, have always been talking about, you know, skin, you know, the skinwalkers. Um, and yeah. so when you did your movie, what did you find out about that? The, do you remember the the ex-policeman that was the Apache? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, he's, he's, a, he's a Navajo. He married a an Apache woman and lives on the reservation with her and has children and all the normal things. But when he was a young person back back in New Mexico, he saw he saw a skinwalker and shot shot an arrow through it and chased it. Mm -hmm. He believes. Yeah. Um, again, I'm I'm I I don't discount the idea that uh, skinwalkers exist. Um, I've heard too many stories that are seem so way too believable for them not to exist. Um, but again, I've never seen one. Um, and I know that they can shape shift into many different things. Do you think that uh, Bigfoot uh, has anything to do with that? Hard to say, you know, if big, I think that Bigfoot doesn't always exist as Bigfoot. Okay. Um, it can exist as, in many different forms. Uh, that's what shape shifting means. So depending upon who you are and what the circumstances is, what what they show up as has a lot to do with you and what 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 they might perceive as your need or what you can handle. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned that. Uh via the uh, conferences you've attended, that there is uh, some uh, foot stomping going on regarding the Bigfoot alien connection uh, by both ufologists as well as Bigfoot hunters. Um, do you, th you know, we had mentioned that it's starting to catch fire now and it's starting to gain some traction, but what are their uh, theories behind this that it's not possible? Well, I think they're just convinced that it's a hairy beast. Uh -huh. I mean, obviously, some some people reject any paranormal phenomena, right? They're just just not possible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I would just a good a good good section of any population will just say that's all just bullshit. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. And I think that that's the case a lot a lot of times, and even even among our little paranormal worlds here you know i mean anytime somebody comes up with a maybe a new explanation it's immediately poo-pooed you know and uh but then like like we we're saying it's starting to gain this this theory is starting to gain traction and i can see why 
Yeah, yeah, and it's it's an interesting time that it should because probably at you know one time you look at primitive people and and their their world is full of creatures and living things you know that that you know we don't our scientific mind rejects quite easily mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but i i think you know it's possible that whatever this is and it's hard to think of what their composition is but ralph doesn't talk much right <laughs> <laughs> He's accused me of saying, you know, every time I go, well, why don't you ask questions? He's like, every time I'm about to, you bring something up <laughs> and the yeah. same thing. So, you know. so I'll ask Ralph to look at you and imagine a candle, Put use his mind to put a candle in front of you. See if he can do that. Can you do that, Ralph? Yeah, okay. You can do that? In my imagination, sure. So... That's so. Would it not be easy, maybe, for something alien to do something like that? To take your normal experience of Damien and put a Bigfoot, or have to have Damien put a, a Bigfoot in, in instead of you putting the candle, he puts a Bigfoot. In, in your visual field when you're out walking around someday, if you were an alien, it'd be pretty easy. You can see that 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 capability exists, right? Right. My question would be, why do they, why would they do that? Well, that's the thing. I don't think that being able to, in terms of what we call purposes and motivations based on our, you know, sci- our, our science of, of, space time and things it's normal to ask that question but if that's just an illusion space time and things then you know the question you're asking doesn't make any sense to somebody who's not caught in that illusion mm-hmm. the why the why question doesn't work if you if you think it through that's something that that suits us as in our in our particular makeup as biological entities that need to exist, we got to always know: is it going to let us live or not? Is it going to hurt us or not? Can, right. Can, can can I reproduce with that woman? So our, you know, all that is so built in this idea of, need, of purposes and need to be that if that's not there and is not a main construct in, in the way you view the world, then you know you can't ask these kind of questions; they don't fit. Right. And like I said, uh, the experience I had uh, with the abduction, I I mentioned that it totally changed the way I view the world. But prior to that, prior to that happening, um, I kind of had a just simple one, two dimensional view of the world. You know, I mean, if I can't explain what I'm seeing, then I'll my mind will try to explain it in a different way that makes sense to me. And now if I see something that I can't explain, uh, like for instance, you know, Ralph and I live here in Las Vegas and pretty much if you want to see a UFO, you just look up. Yeah. I mean, there are, we've seen a lot of weird things that we can't explain, but I don't sit there and go, well, it was a balloon or it was a, 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 a helicopter or something like that. I entertain the notion that it could be, um, well, truly an unidentified flying object, uh, UAP, um, because I, I know that Nevada is rife with things like this in the, in our skies here. You know, I oh, mean, you're close, we, to, you're close to Area 51. Area 51 and S4 and all of that. Uh, we have Janet Airlines, the airline that flies the employees in and out of uh, uh, Area 51 and uh, Nellis. Um, fly right over our house every day. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's something serious going on here in Nevada. Um, I know that we've had Bigfoot sightings here, but they're not very often uh, from what I understand. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it, these things certainly do change the way you look at the world and change the way you perceive things. Yeah, my, my nephew, Godson, is... Uh... Air Force Colonel, 
he was he was in charge of security for two years and then on the base another two years at Vandenberg, you know where that is? Oh right. And I asked him on one of his many cell phones, uh, what what about UFOs and aliens? And he gave me one word. Believe. Yeah, yeah. I've heard a lot of people in the Air Force say pretty much exactly the same thing. They were, that, interestingly enough, worked security at the bases because they've seen these things. Yeah, there, there was a, a person who I hid the identity of. Remember in the movie? Uh huh. Um, that person rattled off at least seven or eight incidences that that person was familiar with of real alien contact that um, they couldn't talk about. And uh, she, I shouldn't have said she, well, I said it now, um, describe the one case in Alaska where the CO um, said, fuck it, I'm going to report it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I remember that incident, yeah. Very, quite, quite afraid to to let anybody know who in the hell she was and talking about these things, but mm -hmm. but, clear, but had, had her own had her own early childhood incident of contact. Well, speaking of things that people won't talk about, um, you you know you mentioned that you've been in uh, media for a long long time, and yeah. I and I'm 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 wondering. Um, other what uh, other filmmakers that you've encountered, uh, what what they have seen, but they won't admit to it on camera. Um, I I have a neighbor who was doing a a piece on UFOs and interviewed the the Vatican uh, astronomer and got him drunk and the guy said, yeah, well, there are UFOs. We all know that. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Get him drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they like to win, probably. <laughs> so, uh, well, hey, Ron, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, Ralph, do you have any other questions before we split? No. He hasn't asked me any questions. Yeah, <laughs> ask me a question. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, it's been great talking to you. I really enjoyed your film. Um, I'm going to, uh, I, I keep meaning to get back to Amazon to purchase the book. And I uh, keep forgetting about it. But when I do, I, I want to send this to you and have you and your co-producer sign this for me, if you, if you would, please. We can certainly do that. By the way, we're, we're putting on a, a Bigfoot adventure weekend. In my okay. uh, my uh, son-in-law has been doing, it, doing one in, in uh, Ohio for quite some time. In fact, if you look at Chasing Bigfoot, I did one whole program on that experience. But we're, we're going to put one on in, um, in here in Colorado on the weekend of August 7th. Do you have a website or something like that if people are interested in this? Yeah, you, if you look up Bigfoot Adventure Weekend, it'll come up 2020 Colorado. And I'm going to do do a, a special section on, on not hunting Bigfoot, but inviting Bigfoot or any other paranormal. Like, and it's at a place that's that's loaded with ghosts and many kinds of paranormal activities. Oh, cool! And um, so it's not just going to be a Bigfoot hunt; it's pretty much all things paranormal. Yeah, and my son-in-law is very good. He's got all those REM pods and shit like that. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh, uh, -huh, uh -huh. Tell me the name of that website again, BigfootAdventure.com, is that it? Bigfoot Adventure Weekend. Oh, Bigfoot Adventure Weekend. Hang on, let me, let me write that down because I'm going to put um, a link to uh, on the podcast. Yeah, the one, one in, that's going on in Ohio is totally booked up with a waiting list, so it's very popular. Uh, you can bring your kids if you want to, if they have to old enough um, and you go out on night hunts and uh, remember the guy I told you Jim Myers who operates the Sasquatch thing that alerted me to paraphysical Bigfoot he's right. he's also there leading 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 the uh, the event 
So it should be quite interesting for people. And like that I said, that's cool. I'd, I'd love to go do that, but you're a little out of the way for me, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, it's an easy flight to Denver. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not too far, you know, to, to Colorado, but still. <laughs> but You can drive uh, anyway. it in a day. What's it say again? You can drive it in a day through beautiful Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, so, hey, Ron, again, thanks a lot for being here. I really appreciate it. It was fascinating talking to you. Uh, I'm... I'm I, I'm definitely going to get that book uh, that you have out, and I certainly. And you said that the Chasing Bigfoot that's uh, streaming on Amazon as well. It is. It's a five-part series. Okay, I'll definitely you, look that up. You'll, you'll see that you know that between that I you know I've, I've changed my point of view since doing that from the movie you know which is much more recent. Uh, but, uh -huh. but you know there's good stuff in it. A good history of the whole Bigfoot phenomena. Um, different different cast of characters in many ways, because most of them were, you know, creatures, hairy creatures in the wood type people, but good people. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks a lot for being here again. And uh, Ralph, what do you say we get out of here? Sounds good. Take care, Ralph. We'll talk to you next time.